Hi, good morning. My name is JC Lim Peñaranda and today we're going to discuss how SARA is using strategic management in order to deal with an increasing competitiveness of the digital environment and consider whether they have adapted their strategies to these changes. Today I have with me the market analysts from JP Morgan, Yunas Alisaini and Caroline Buepe to discuss SARA strategic management. Good morning. Good morning. Can you tell us a bit more about Zara for those who don't know what Zara is? Zara is a fashion retailer founded by Amaneko Ortega in 1975. Um, it's part of the Inditex Group uh, and the headquarters is in Spain. Um, Zara has, um, well, sells affordable clothing, quite trendy clothing, and they also have a store that sells home furnishings. And as of the financial year ended 2012, the Inditex Group had a turnover of 12.7 billion pounds and Zara in its, um, itself contributed 66% of that, which is 8.4 billion pounds. Um, they have a customer base which comprises 60% women, 25% men and 15% children. Indeed. That's interesting. So what strategies do Zara have in place in order to attract more customers? Well, Zara have four key strategies in place. The first being a market orientation strategy. They train members of staff to garner customer feedback in order to react to changes in trends. They employ a PDA system which gathers feedback and changes in the market and rallies information to the in-house manufacturing team known as the Cube. This allows them to make adequate changes to product lines in real time. Secondly, they have a product strategy in place. Zara prides themselves on having the fastest restock system in fashion. They restock new designs in limited quantities every two weeks. This encourages frequent customer visits, hence the term fast fashion. Thirdly, they have an efficient process in place. They have creative teams in place in order to work simultaneously online to reduce time. Zara have in place a just-in-time process in order to reduce the amount of inventory whilst reducing storage costs. Due to this, its lead time is unbeatable. For example, Zara have materials 50% undyed to allow for fast changes and adaptation if needed. Finally, they have a promotional tactic in place. Zara uses 0.3% of sales revenue on advertising, which in comparison to competitors is minimal, with main competitors using 3-4%. Instead of using mass marketing, Zara uses prime location in order to attract customers. Zara employs spacious store layout to provide a comfortable shopping experience. These points combined allow Zara to limit external advertising costs. Okay, how have they employed online strategies? Zara's first online store was, was set up in 2010. Um, it has an online presence in 21 key markets. They also use platforms such as Facebook and they also have um, applications which you can download onto your phone and onto your iPad or you know, your mobile tablets. Um, they are trying to engage with the public using online means, as a recent study has shown by um, Deloitte, um, a survey that was done in 2013, this year actually. Uh, there has been a rise in the mobile usage, um, a rise in 20, by 28% um, in comparison to uh, previous time. And this number has risen to 46% among the 18 to 24 year olds. Uh, now looking at Zara, they do target this um, um, age group, although they do target um, much uh, a little bit older than that. So they are trying to get the um, trying to get people to engage more. So how could you compare Sara to their competitors? Right. Um, in comparison to H M M, H and M, for example, H uh, and M provides a better interactive online service um, in the sense that uh, customers are able to you know plan out their outfits online. They can toggle on, on garments and see what a garment looks like opened and closed, whereas Zara is more restrictive. Um, also, they, um, they have to, you have to spend, the customer has to spend at least £50 pounds, you know, to get uh, the benefits of free delivery or you know, the benefits of picking up in store. Um, apart from that, um, Zara is ahead of its competitors in the sense that they have a vertical um, integrated system which puts them ahead of the game because then they have everything in one place you know they have the manufacturing in one place they have the designers in one place and logistics all in one central place 
Um, and this allows them to be a bit more flexible and a bit quick um, in delivering their products. And also they spend less on advertising because um, they would rather have customers coming into their store and the money that they save from advertising, they can use on more cost-effective market strategies. That's interesting. Although we could say Zara is not reaching their full potential, online statistics do show that Zara only accommodate for 0.3% of the global browsing in comparison to 0.4% of H&M. So there is room for improvement with Zara, as they are missing out a certain target market, we could say. Yes, I agree. So how did Zara grow into the largest fashion retailer globally? Zara became the largest uh, fashion retailer globally, partly because of the processes they use. They have a vertical integration uh, system, which I mentioned earlier on. This results in a fast supply chain, low stock levels, and the constant updating of their collections. Also, we can relate this to the Taos matrix. Um, this is how Zara has used their strengths to overcome the opportunities, their strengths to overcome their threats and the weaknesses to uh, make use of their opportunities and also how they have minimized their weaknesses to avoid any threats. So firstly, I'll start with the strengths that they've used to take advantage of their opportunities. They have a sophisticated um, information and technology system which they use to relay, for example, um, information about customer preferences. If a customer prefers something to be tweaked a little bit, uh, this information is, is, used, is relayed to their manufacturers or their designers using a very high-tech um, information system. And they also use platforms uh, for their finished products, such as YouTube, social media, they use newsletters, and also they have their online retail. Uh, moving on to how they use their strengths to overcome their threats. Um, they develop a customer loyalty by continuously seeking information from the customer. Um, they like to know their preferences and like mentioned before, if they need to tweak something, Zara can have something tweaked and installed within um, 10 days. Also in terms of price, Zara does um, some research, market research to see what um, other retailers are offering in terms of pricing and they generally tend to offer something that's 15% lower than the average price. And then if we move on to how they use their weaknesses to take advantage of their opportunities, um, once a prototype has been approved uh, for design or collected for design, they use a computer-aided des uh, design system um, which transmits this information relevant information to the cutting machines and to other systems in the factory. And these um, pieces that have been cut up have barcodes and you know so they can be tracked throughout the system, uh, throughout the process. Although it's not very clear what percentage of the online sales um, contribute to their turnover, um, there's, there are some statistics um, done by, well, there was a research done by Credit Suisse which says that their purchases will, their online purchases will generate over 782 million pounds. To continue on what was just said, Zara is looking to minimize weaknesses in order to reduce threats as they have a system that is vertically integrated. According to the Strategic Journal 2003, Zara fosters a culture where high levels of responsiveness of market information drive continuous create, creation of added customer value. Zara bought in an average of 10,000 products a year, thereby increasing product flexibility. The design team spends all year studying the market trends. This information is fed to the purchasing, design and product functions and, un and unsuccessful products are taken off the market promptly. Oh, that's quite comprehensive. So do you have any closing remarks? Well, yes, I feel they can improve their online reach. Zara currently have a restricted online site as they focus solely on their high street stores. Zara have gained vast customer loyalty due to this and changing their ideal to adapt to the online market will be difficult. As Zara's strengths lie in their ability to attract their customers to brick and mortar stores, changing culture to focus solely on online retailing will be problematic. And now a quick breakdown of Zara. Zara. 
the Spanish company at the forefront of fast fashion, where speed and disposability are the new black. Launched in 1975, Zara now has almost 2,000 stores in 76 countries. Its parent company, Inditex Group, turned over $17 billion last year, helping reclusive founder Amarco Ortega, a railway worker's son, become the seventh richest man in the world. Zara's HQ is a futuristic building known as the Cube in La Coruña, northwestern Spain. From there, staff churn out 30,000 designs a year, mere carbon copies of fashion's big names. Lightning fast, locally targeted designs are Zara's specialty. When Madonna played three weeks in European tours in 2001, teenage girls turn up to her later shows with knockoff outfits of her designs. Zara's vertically integrated design limits outsourcing, making most of its catwalk copies in-house, ensuring better quality control. When it does use cheaper labour, it goes for poor European countries rather than the developing world. Garments hit shop floors within three weeks of designs, blitzing the industry average of six months. Fashion used to be sold in four seasons. Zara wants you to buy it in 104 new seasons with new clothes arriving in every store twice every two and weeks. And fuel the need to turn over your wardrobe. Brand's global distribution centre moves two and a half million items per week. Nothing remains warehoused more than 72 hours. Clothes are ironed in advance and put on hangers with security and price tags, safe in store staff, prime selling time. Records are kept of any clothes tried on but not bought and sent back to Spain along with all cash register data. Customers visit Zara on average six times more than their competitors, causing rival stores to dread its arrival. When Zara opened a store in China last year, one industry commentator noted it just murdered everything around it. And when the doors in Zara's first ever Australian store opened, 80% of the store's stock were snapped up in three minutes. Shoppers might love Zara, but fashion's elite hate them. One unnamed designer claimed, we spend a fortune researching and working up ideas, then Zara comes along and walks off with them for nothing. Zara has achieved global success with almost zero advertising, which his founder called a pointless distraction. Zara, fast, affordable, repackaged fashion. A business model beat on, built on speed, design and addiction. Okay, thank you very much, Caroline and Jonas, for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's My been pleasure. A pleasure.